How you doing guys? Malik Aff from over at Modern Pawn. Today we're going to be talking about LWRC's piston driven system versus LMT's piston driven system. Both of these guns are absolute Cadillacs in the AR-15 world. LWRC, one of my absolute favorite. LMT, one of my absolute favorite. These guys make world-class quality gear. We're going to give you some in-depth breakdown on how the two piston systems work what they look like, some of the advantages, some of the disadvantages. Let's go over real quick what we have on the table right now. First of all, this is an LWRC M6 SPR Mod Zero, Patriot Brown, very nice looking rifle. There's a video on the, one of these guys coming out pretty soon. This is an M6A1 piston driven upper receiver from LWRC. And this is an M6A2 PSD 6.8 shorty piston driven from LWRC. This is the LMT MRP monolithic rail platform piston driven 16 inch gun, MRP upper, and we have a couple of other barrels. This is an 8 inch DI and this is an 18 inch stainless steel DI. Both of these barrels will go in either one of these LMT guns. You have the convertibility on the LMT to go from piston to gas. We'll show you all that in the breakdown. What we got on the table right now is the LWRC and the LMT upper receiver only. I feel like the LMT lower receiver and the LWRC lower receiver are of equal quality. They're both very good. They're mil spec. They don't do anything weird with them. Uh, they use the standard configuration on the lower receivers. So what we're going to talk about today is the upper receivers and in particular how the piston systems work one versus the other. The first thing that distinguishes the LWRC from the LMT is that the LWRC uses a multi-piece receiver handguard configuration. The upper receiver is an upper receiver. There's a piece right here. This is a piece and this is a piece. So the handguard looks like it's three pieces. It's got some Torx heads that lock it down and the upper receiver is separate over here. The striking feature of the LMT is the fact that it is a monolithic rail platform system. Now what does that mean? That means this upper receiver, the whole thing is one piece of billet aluminum that was milled from a big old log. From here to here is all one piece of aluminum. There is no transition from the upper receiver to the uh, barrel nut to a handguard. It's all one piece. All of this as you can see is continuous. There's no seams, they don't weld anything. Again, milled from billet. That's what gives it the monolithic rail platform system. One of the nice features to an MRP style upper receiver is that this rail right here is one continuous piece. There's no gap, there's no misalignment from the, the quad rail to the upper receiver. You could put anything anywhere and line up any two types of optics or sights or anything and you know they're going to be straight. Very cool system from LMT. The other thing that this upper receiver facilitates is a quick change barrel design. The bolt carrier group on the LMT runs no gas rings. This is free, the, the bolt head is free floating in the carrier and the carrier is a proprietary carrier for their piston system. This knuckle right here where the piston impacts is milled into the carrier. It is not a separate piece. It is not welded on there. It is all one homogenous piece of, of billet steel that is milled uh, for the bolt carrier group. The LWRC bolt carrier group is similar to the LMT bolt carrier group in the fact that they mill in the piston knuckle on the top of the bolt carrying group where the piston actually contacts the bolt carrier group. They profile it a little differently. They put some, some um, dirt grooves in here so that it can channel away any grit or grime. They reduce the bearing surface. They actually run piston rings, gas rings, in the carrier group, which gives it a little bit of tension. Uh, I'm not an LWRC designer. They put it in there for a reason. LMT put, doesn't put them in for a reason. I'm sure they both have the reasons for doing it and not doing it. On the LMT upper receiver, the way you access the piston is via this part up here. There is a cross locking pin right here that is detented and springed in place. You push this, you twist it, and the piston comes out. 
When the piston comes out, the whole thing comes out. Here's the spring, the rod, the piston housing, and the actual piston head. Now, the LMT uses gas rings on their piston system. There are two small gas rings right here that are removable and, inter and, and replaceable, and your core right here that this fits in there snugly. It's not tight, but it's snug. This goes in there like that. Uh, the spring can come off real easy if it needs to be replaced, and this is all one piece. To replace the piston, you just put it back in just like it came out. Now you have to align it back here to get it back into the upper receiver, but once you do that, it's pretty straightforward. When you put this back in place, you must make sure that right here says fire. It will lock back into place in a closed gas position. Right now the gas is closed. If I was wanting to use this rifle suppressed with very little action noise, I could put the suppressor on here and this turns the gas off. This will cause the rifle to malfunction. It will not fire in semi-automatic mode like this. You must turn it to the fire position. So in replacing and removing the piston, make sure that you go back to the fire position in order for your rifle to run properly. The LWRC uses a different style upper receiver, different style of piston. What they have in order to get to the piston is they use a removable top cover on the quad rail. What you do to get this off is you unscrew these two thumb studs right here, push that forward and this pops off. A lot of guys find this a disadvantage and a lot of guys find this an advantage. I've never had it, one of them come loose on me. Uh, I've never had an issue with the front sight returning to zero. The, the tolerance on, on these is very good. I've never had an issue with it, but moving parts are moving parts. If you're to remove the piston from the LWRC, push back on this and this pulls out. And you have this rear part of the assembly right here. You have the center part of the piston and you have this right here. So on the LWRC, the gas block actually runs the male portion of the piston and the piston rod runs the female portion of the piston with a vent hole right here. So as the pressure builds up inside of here, it pushes on the inside of this and this comes backwards and then vents the gas when this clears that hole. So this is the stroke basically of this piston. It is a short stroke piston. She strokes from about here to there. That's all, that's all she does. The system in my opinion is very robust in the fact it does not take interchangeable gas rings or, or uh, consumable gas rings. This is a, a piston head that's got some, some grooves built into it. The tolerance ring is nice and tight on here. It goes together really nicely. To put it back together, we put the piston head back on there. The rear portion of the piston rod goes back into the receiver. And this rod is reversible. It will go on either way. It doesn't matter which way you put it on there. We, go, we then compress the spring and snap that back into place. What we're going to do next, guys, is we're going to pull the barrel on this LMT and show you how the MRP system has a very interesting mission adaptable feature where you can change the barrel out from piston to direct, and ga direct gas impingement uh, or vice versa and go from short barrel to long barrel to SPR. You have a lot of options. Uh, the LMT comes with, when you buy a full gun, it comes with a preset torque wrench. Uh, this is our high quality in-house torque wrench. These two Torx heads, these are T30s that are set to 140 inch pounds of torque. You unscrew these two and the barrel comes right out. We'll show you that right now. Now that you have the T30 torque head bolts out of the upper receiver, the barrel comes out. It's a pretty snug fit. Give it a little wiggle. The barrel comes out of the upper receiver. What you have left here is your monolithic rail platform system. It is a big hunk of aluminum. Don't forget this guy right here. This is the washer that goes to the Torx head bolts. Here you have the LMT piston that would have the piston going into the upper receiver and you have the bolt carrier group that as the buffer spring pushes the carrier forward 
it goes into the barrel extension. The barrel head starts to turn on this cam and locks in place. When the bolt is locked in place and the carrier is all the way forward, or the rifle is in full battery, the piston actually pretty much contacts right on this knuckle. I don't know how much contact. It doesn't compress the spring, but it does contact. Now when the rifle is fired, bullet goes, bullet goes down the barrel, behind it is hot, high pressure gas. When it gets to this point right here, gas bleeds into this block, puts pressure on the top of that piston, it's sealed off by the gas rings that were in here, and this whole piston strokes backwards. If you can see when I stroke that piston backwards, it unlocked the bolt head. When it unlocks, it unlocks the bolt head by this cam pin right here. The cam pin, as you pull on this, it drags this inside surface of the bolt carrier on the bolt on the cam pin and causes it to rotate on this ramp. So as this comes backwards, the bolt head rotates. The bolt head is now free from the barrel extension and the rifle bolt carrier group is now in motion. It has enough inertia via also the gas coming back this way for everything to cycle, go back and forth and cycle the rifle. Let's do that one more time. So now the rifle is coming forward. It's picking up around off the magazine and pushes it into the chamber. Behind it comes the bolt, the bolt and the carrier. As you can see, if I see I misaligned that a little bit and that wanted to turn that. What keeps the bolt head straight and aligned with the carrier group is a groove in the upper receiver in which this cam pin runs. If, if you guys have never really took, taken an AR-15 apart or thought about how it works, that's how direct impinged gas guns and piston guns work. This cam pin right here rides along the upper receiver, keeps it straight. Inside the upper receiver there is a pocket. When it gets to this point right here for this cam pin to come counterclockwise. It basically rotates counterclockwise, locks in place, the rifle is in battery, it goes back together just like it came apart. If I want to go from piston gun, this was our piston assembly, I can either go, I have two options here, some of the barrels that we have, shorty DI and an 18 inch stainless precision DI style system. Let's put this guy in there. All we will do is line the gas key up in the hole in the receiver, push this all the way to the rear. When you look through these holes, you will be able to see this cut right here. It will only go together if it's properly aligned. So once that's visible, put our washer back in place, put our Torx head back in place. What we'll do from here is you torque these two down to 140 inch pounds. And again, don't just guess on this. You don't want to damage your receiver and you also don't want it too loose. So I would highly recommend using the provided torque wrench that came with the LMT. If you do not... Now that both of my Torx heads are properly torqued down, all you have to do is change out the bolt carrier from your piston bolt carrier to your gas bolt carrier. And the rifle is now in a DI configuration. And that's all there is to it, guys. Thanks for watching, guys. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comment, send us a message. We'll be more than happy to answer any of your questions. That's what we're here for. Make sure to subscribe to our channel. Check us out on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Modern Pawn and Guns. And check out the website, modernpawnandguns.com. Stay tuned, guys. We'll have more great content coming your way. And as always, thanks for watching.